Not many people remember us, not many people care, unless a life is saved or lost while we are fighting there. We learn to respect the fire we fight and even love it too. In order to end its destructive path, it's what we train to do. There are many who cannot comprehend why we love the things they fear. Where the first they call in their time of need, it's the reason why we're here. The next alarm might make us proud in heroes of some kind, or maybe it will be our last in service to mankind. But whatever fate may bring us, it doesn't change our hearts. We're firefighters to the end. We'll always do our part. Welcome to this episode of Historical Niagara as we explore the most famous firehouses across the Niagara region, that is, the historical ones. And later in the show, we will be joined by actor, director, producer, and of course dancer, Robert Krantz. Stay tuned. God, I love Niagara. I have a question for you. What do you know about Niagara? It has a really big fall. I have a question for you. Do you like history? So let me ask you, is that a rhetorical question? Okay, so we we're talking about the more obscure places in Niagara. Some of the coolest history is not even in Niagara Falls. Historical Niagara rocks! What else do you have to say for yourself? Good morning, I'm Donald and I'm all about history. And I'm all about the base. The base. If you're born, raised, or visit Niagara, you're always from Niagara. One of the greatest places on earth. The Niagara region is loaded with history, and one of those histories is fire stations. Join us as we travel across the region and look at some of these historical monuments that are testaments to the heroes of years past as they still stand today and serve as reminders to true heroes. I love the idea of keeping the old fire stations as historic landmarks simply because they are so much a part of our local history. Those buildings house those heroes and their equipment that kept watch over our safety for decades. And when you look at the unique structure of those old buildings, it almost transports you back in time. A, a time when the bells would clang and the firefighters would race to slide down the, the old fire pole, climb into their bunker gear, and race off to help those in need. Yeah, I'd have to say that I'm, I'm certainly in favor of all these fire stations. Uh, being kept around for for future generations to enjoy. The fire hall in St. David's, that's that was our second fire hall in Niagara on the Lake. The fact that the restaurant is there now is awesome. I looked at it years before, a couple of years before Chris opened that up uh, to put some kind of a, a shop or a store or fruit stand or something in there, because there was uh, there, there was this old building and it had been vacated for some time and we needed to have something in there. So I'm really glad Chris put that restaurant in there. It's good food too, by the way. Uh, but uh, that, that kind of thing, we don't want to lose that history, the historical aspect. And St. David's has got a long, long history, as long as the old town, for the, for the most part. But okay, so this building was built uh, as a fire hall in 1942 uh, by the uh, township of Niagara on the Lake. It was a volunteer station for 43 years, up until 1985. Uh, a lot of local uh, men uh, uh, have, uh, have uh, served here and uh, it also used to be a center for, uh, for gatherings and small parties, uh, you know, uh, uh, celebrations uh, and whatnot in, in a party room upstairs. Um, the building still has the original uh, garage door frames on the outside and, 
and uh, we converted it in uh, 1989 to a restaurant. I think it is not, a, quote, an important building. It's simply a building left, I suspect, from the 30s or 40s, and uh, I don't think it has any architectural importance, but it is one of the few buildings left in the village of, of St. David's that are connected to other times. So from that point of view, I think it is important. So our, our restaurant is, um, is uh, designed to be uh, a country kind of in the Mediterranean style, though, um, you know, amongst the vineyards in Niagara and the Lake and, uh, and in St. David's in particular. Um, we, we, we wanted to fit in with that kind of, uh, of a country, uh, relaxed uh, style of, of dining. Um, and uh, so uh, it, it does have a, a little bit of a, of a Greek and uh, Italian uh, twist into the menu uh, representing my heritage, my mother being Italian, my father being Greek. It's been uh, 25 years now and uh, it's been fairly successful for us and uh, we enjoy being uh, part of the community here in, uh, in St. David's Niagara on the Lake. Um, and uh, and uh, we, we, we look to be doing uh, more down the road uh, with the building, but uh, leaving the, the, original, uh, the original exterior just for, uh, for aesthetics. In uh, trying to preserve a lot of properties, and of course we have the Welland uh, Central Fire Hall, which is undergoing some renovations to preserve that at the same time. And you know, a lot of our heritage features, things like the aqueduct, are significant. Uh, Merritt Island is a historic island created by the river and the uh, canals being built. And it was opened in December 17th, 1920. Um, it is built in the Edwardian classical style that was popular just after the turn of the 19, uh, 1900s. And it incorporates a lot of classical features going way back to the ancient Romans. It's a basilica plan, like there was in ancient Rome. So it's a a uh, rectangle with two hexagonal apses on either end. This fire hall is a heritage building and it has historical value and it's quite the asset for the city of Welland. I've traveled across Ontario on numerous jobs and by far this fire hall is one of the best fire halls that I've ever seen. Trucks of this nature are no longer in service. For one thing, is they don't have the safety features of, of the new trucks. But again, at the time for re reliability, again, these are, you can hear, that's solid. They don't, they don't make vehicles that way anymore. But again, for the time this, this truck ran, and it ran a long time, it was one of our better trucks. Our architect was uh, Walter W. Lachance. He worked in Welland and in Saskatchewan. Um, he's a French Canadian architect, and he designed, this is his major building that he designed in Welland. Um, from what I know and what I've researched going back to 1993 on this building, um, it's the only one of this style, particular style, in North America that I can find. And it is the only building, uh, one of the very few buildings in Canada, that still has its original interior features as well. So what we have is the original street corner call, uh, uh, call boxes uh, for the street corner call boxes the, the master control panel where some it was on a closed circuit if somebody saw a fire somewhere in well and they'd run to the corner this is before everybody had a phone and they'd pull the fire box and it would break the circuit and it would come into this panel here and the panel would then print out a code and uh, ring it in the horn and they'd know where the fire was so in the original day of this building and actually till this this building closed this was uh, the quick exit access. I happened to come out of a dead sleep and want to jump on this pole. I see the firefighters, thank goodness there was uh, one cushion pad. There was a period where we had two cushion pads simply because if you, 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 your, the legs went weak, you buckled, or you end up on, on your butt. But the majority of firefighters always did it well. This is not a, a way you would want to do, have done it. You want to have a sweater on. Uh, you you got to wrap around, there would be a, a burn to it. And again, you know, it's a heritage building and it has historical value. Uh, anything that uh, they can donate and assist the, the, the volunteer group of this um, fire hall uh, would be honorable because um, it's their asset and it's certainly an asset to the city of Wellens. We have uh, a lot of the original furniture upstairs, of course the, the fire poles where uh, the brass fire poles and of course the original features inside include the two twin oak staircases and uh, 
we have a 1957 La France bumper here that belongs to the city. So this is a, uh, an ideal um, building to have a public heritage building. So the plan is that when it's restored, we're going to open it to the public. And so the first, first floor, and one of the bedrooms on the second floor for them to see how the firefighters lived and worked in 1920 and all the way through to 2007. Um, and uh, then the upper floors, this part of the second floor and the third floor, will be uh, actually rented so that it'll be self-supporting. But right now, we need to make, to, to ask for donations so that we can uh, renovate uh, and restore the building. Foremost, I would like to thank the numerous volunteers that are on this committee and also the Heritage Advisory Committee, a committee of uh, well into the council, um, for their you know, perseverance in ensuring that this building remains here in Welland and it certainly uh, is an asset to Welland and uh, the dedicated hours and again the perseverance of this group, uh, very thankful for them and, and so is the City of Welland really, truly thanking them all. Central Station Education Initiative are working to raise funds to restore and renovate this building uh, so that we can open it as a public heritage building and we can um, have people, visitors and uh, residents through to see what the firefighters, how they lived and worked from 1920 on the way, all the way through. And of course, once renovated, it'll be self-supporting because we're gonna rent part of the upper floors. So Fire Hall Theatre on Walnut Street is very historic and of course it used to be an actual fire hall. It's been repurposed and where we've been incubating a lot of actors and local performances and a lot of people got their start working at that theatre, kind of honing their skills. And even now it's a great neighborhood location but it puts out some great talent and it's great when you give a venue for people that are trying to develop to get started because every idea started as a small idea. Every concept started as a small concept. Every big and famous person started as a little person with a dream, and that theater helps people with dreams, with ideas, with concepts, helps them incubate, helps them get out, and make a name for themselves and see what it's all about. It's a great way to spread your wings, great way to take off the training wheels and actually express yourself and get experience. So I'm glad that we've got, got these kind of places here at the grassroots for all the public to experience. This was the number one station in the city of Niagara Falls for the Niagara Falls Fire Department and began its life in 1917. Originally uh, it was horse-drawn wagons, uh, later to become uh, more of a truck thing. In 1967, this building was closed when the new Morrison Street Station opened. At that point in time, the building was left empty and a few interested people in the city were looking for a place to do their community theater. This building then was turned into a small theater where it was originally going to be a practice facility and a rehearsal facility. Stamford has a long history in the Longhurst area where it started out with originally it was merely a tower where they would drive the hoses with a hose drill. Moved on to a small building very similar to this where it had two bays where they had the trucks. And then they expanded their hall to a four bay situation where they were able to keep three trucks in the space with one spare. That was a huge area at the time and people in Stanford knew when something was going on because the siren would go off. But it was also a very community centered area because it was a community organization. And it's a space where you can come in and enjoy yourself. Now people think, well, but it's an old fire hall. And you know what? It really is an old fire hall. It still has that sort of feel of the old days. It has the look of the red brick outside. We have the, the former doors where the trucks went out have been made to look like they're still in existence and it's a really great place for you to come in and enjoy yourself and see a show. This building was built in 1961 to replace the old fire hall that was outgrown and it operated as a fire hall for many years until the new fire trucks couldn't actually fit in the building any longer. So then they had to build another fire station. After that, this became a gym. It was the new image fitness for some time with other activities were hosted upstairs in the meeting space. 
And then in 2013, Station One Coffee House was born and we've been here for six years. Some people come in and ask us if there was a fire pole and I've talked to different fire chiefs. Some say there was a fire pole, some say there's not a fire pole. Looking at the blueprints, I can't see any evidence of one, but we really don't know the answer. We also at times do have some volunteer firefighters that might come in and ask for an application to become a firefighter when they're sent to Station One, but they're forgetting that it's now Station One Coffee House, it's not Station One Fire Hall anymore. But it's always nice to have someone come in from the community. The Coffee House is a great place to meet for work. Um, first dates happen here all the time. We have seniors that come in and just need a place to go and connect with somebody else. So it's like a nice, warm, welcoming place. We've got home crocheted blankets to cozy up to. There's always events here, whether it's a concert upstairs or live music for open mic or Friday night trivia, which we have every single week. There's always something happening at Station One and it's a nice hub of activity. Okay, folks, it's trivia time. And we have a very special guest, Robert Krantz who's going to ask you a question about fire stations. Hey everybody, this is Robert Krantz. Um, hey. I was uh, the writer, producer, and co-star of the movie Faith, Hope, and Love. When you dance in Greek, you have to say Yasu, and then the person's first name. Yasu Jimmy. But you have to say like a Greek. Yasu Jimmy. Yasu Jimmy. There you go, you sound like a Greek now. I don't know what's on your heart that so how was your night? <laughs> when you dance, let whatever you are feeling pour out of your souls. I'm happy to see you back in the saddle again. Hit me one time! Good to see him smile. You just gotta really sell it. You leave. I had no prior dance experience. Although, in college, they did call me Funkenstein. Frankenstein, maybe? No, no, no. I'm Greek, but everyone thought that I was Jewish, and so they called me Stein. And then I took second place in my fraternity dance contest, so they started calling me Funk and Stein. It's a great story. Can you tell it again longer? All right, so today's trivia question is this. What is the busiest fire station in the world? Think about that. Not an easy question. And the answer is, thank you to the members of the Los Angeles Fire Station number nine. <laughs> the building was originally built in 1913 and is uh, station number two here in St. Catharines. Uh, it existed uh, in its uh, two-story state uh, and served this, the city well at the time. And then uh, when a new pumper truck was being purchased in 42, they needed more space, so the addition went on the south side of the building and more or less doubled its area, but that was only a single story, resulting in the current sort of massing of the building, single story on the south and two stories on the north side. 53, I started, there's a picture over there or something. I started in 1953, but I had to take my probation up at the main station. So what I did that, they sent me down here on relief, you know. And this side of the, of the was the, uh, where they used to keep the horse and the steamer. So then when they sent the steamer up to Thorold, the fire truck came in here. And they only had about an inch and a half on each side to get out. So you want a pump, you had to go in the middle of Lake Street and turn left or right. On the north side of the building was the side where, uh, given the vintage of the building, this uh, predates uh, vehicles. So all the fire equipment was horse-drawn. And on the north original side of the building, they had horses pull the uh, fire equipment. And it was a pulley system, and the harnesses for the horses were suspended up at the ceiling level. And in an emergency, they, the horses would be brought forward, they'd lower all the equipment on, and then out they go. So the doors were a very critical part. And it wasn't something that uh, served a purpose anymore. 
but we wanted to have the look on the exterior of the building that we had overhead doors. So what we did was we actually had the doors removed and we built them as solid walls and just did the fenestration pattern and the painting on the outside to make it look like the old historic doors that would have been there. And we did this uh, for down-to-earth pottery prior to us owning the building. It's when we first started to sort of get interested and excited about the building. One of the things that excited us about this building is that it has beautiful bones. It's solid and secure, multi-wide uh, uh, brick uh, in the uh, walls. This was originally the exterior wall. And the room, when the station rather, when we had purchased it, had a lot of separate rooms and areas. And what we did, we wanted to restore the building back to when uh, the bones were just right. And this was a big open hall. So we removed all of the partitions and doors and anything that were here and we just created workstations uh, for the office to operate out of so that you could appreciate the structure of the old building. We didn't find any need to put in new walls because anything we would do would just detract from that and you can see from our meeting area that again we just went in with a type of intervention that was completely different than the original building to play up that distinction between new and old. Okay so why don't we head upstairs and we can tell you a little bit about what we've done to convert the second floor of the fire station to a private residence. Come on with me. Well, getting used to being in an old fire hall uh, does take a little bit. Uh, first when you enter, the uh, creaks coming up and down the stairs uh, certainly uh, tell someone else who's in here uh, that someone's coming in, which is a, a sort of a great benefit. And um, having the multiple levels when you are sort of newly into the loft living, and wake up in the middle of the night or the lights are off or something, you have to get used to a step here or three steps there. But it's part of the charm and we absolutely love it. Uh, we thought we would sort of like living here, but uh, we find we're spending a lot more time here uh, just because we enjoy the, uh, the, the quality of the space. My wife and I have lived here now for about a year and a half and uh, there are a few things that one uh, has to get used to, such as the traffic noises that come along with urban living on a main street. Uh, but one of the beauties we love about living here is that we have windows on both sides of us, so the quality of light at any hour of the day is just beautiful in here. And because of the lofty ceilings, we never feel like we're uh, in an apartment situation and having the multiple levels. Uh, is great because we like being able to do our own thing yet not divorced from each other into separate little rooms so this way uh, one could be reading one can be working uh, on jewelry or something like that and yet you're still connected even though you're into uh, different areas of the, uh, the loft. Hi, my name is Shannon Passero. I am the owner of the old fire hall, a landmark in the downtown Thorold area. It was designed by architect, architect John Latshaw and built for $2,483 in 1876. It was a combination of bell tower and hose tower. It's got yellow brick, red brick, and it's known for its semicircular windows. The tower has remained in use till 1964 when it moved, uh, the fire hall moved and it was purchased by local architect Grant Sauter. Grant uh, restored the outside and we were fortunate enough in 2017 to purchase the building and renovate the inside to become our design studio. We love the building. It's got some great characters, including the, um, the jail cells in the basement still. And uh, it has been recognized by the National Trust of Canada, as well as the Architectural Conservatory of Ontario. Well, folks, there you have it. 
the historical fire stations across the Niagara region, a piece of history that stands today and celebrates the history of the heroes from yesteryear. If you're in the area, check these buildings out and taste a piece of history. See you next time on Historical Niagara. It's, uh, well, I've been out of there 30 years. I started young and retired young, you know. And uh, we had a tower down below the, the big bridge there, the one that cost so much stuff. And we used to go down there two and three times a week. That was part of my job, the training the men, you know. You have to go back in history to realize that Niagara Falls was surrounded by what was called Stamford Township. Stamford Township was protected by a fire department, which was all volunteer. Similar to what we have now in Chippewa, where they have their own volunteer company. The Stanford Center Volunteer Firemen's Association was the volunteer company in Stanford. Their uh, hall was on Longhurst Avenue, and I believe they began in the early 1920s. It was a group made up of interested local citizens that wanted to take on firefighting to protect their uh, fellow residents and communities. I have a little bit of history there because I grew up in that fire hall as my father was in the department and he actually used to drive the trucks and stuff. So we would hear the siren go off when there was a fire call, and that was something very spectacular because everyone in the neighborhood seemed to be a member of that. But still, I have a dangerous job. Well, that's you're getting paid for it because it's a dangerous job. Thank you.